Hello, my name is Sean Simmons. I'm a physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. I'm the creator of the smartlifeseries.com, and today we're going to talk briefly about cervical stenosis and cervical arthritis. So what exactly is cervical stenosis? Typically, it is the narrowing of a joint space. So in your spine, in between each vertebrae, there's an opening where the spinal cord sends out nerves. And these nerves supply your shoulder, your arm, all the way down to your hands. So over time, there's wear and tear on the joint. And that can be because of posture, sports, car accidents, a number of reasons. Um, and what happens is that space where the nerves come out can shrink. And the nerves really don't like being touched. So if the space shrinks enough, then pressure gets placed on the nerve and you get a number of symptoms. The most common cause of this is osteoarthritis or just arthritis. Um, it's pretty typical. Most people will show signs of arthritis after the age of 45 if you take an x-ray. I think it's important to note that just because you have stenosis diagnosed by x-ray or MRI it does not mean that you're going to have symptoms. And I also think it's important to point out even with degeneration of the spine or arthritis it does not mean that you will end up with symptoms. So how common is this and are you alone? Well, because it's commonly caused by arthritis and over 46 million adults in the United States alone has arthritis, the odds are there's a lot of people that have stenosis. Um, arthritis is the most common in people over 60. It's a major cause of disability and costs the United States more than $124 billion a year which means a couple things. One, there's a ton of people that have it. And two, there is a ton of research on conservative and surgical and medicinal care that can be provided to help treat this condition. In other words, you're not alone and there's a lot of things you can do for help. What are the signs and symptoms? Well, there's a number, but the most common is numbness in the shoulder, arm, and hand, or tingling in the shoulder, arm, and hand, and pain. These are the ones clinically that I see the most, and they're the ones most indicative of pressure on a nerve in your neck. A couple other symptoms that are pretty common are stiffness in the neck, decreased motion in the joints of the neck, and at times, tenderness to touch in certain areas of the neck. So we talked about this briefly already, but what are some of the causes? Arthritis is the biggest one. Arthritis leads to bone spurs and degeneration of the joint, and therefore narrowing of that space that the nerve is trying to get out of. The other thing in the neck is a forward head posture. So think about when you're sitting there at your computer for a long time, uh, doing a lot of work at the computer, reading hunched over, any time where your back is curved and your head is forward places a lot of strain on the joints of the neck and can eventually lead to arthritis and stenosis of the neck. Other causes are just wear and tear over time. The joints just wear out in some people. Uh, there can be a traumatic injury earlier in life uh, either fractures or car accident or things like that. Uh, lack of deep neck flexor endurance uh, is a key one for me as a physical therapist and for you as a way to treat it. And the neck flexors are just the muscles, the deep muscles in the front of your neck. When these are weak, you tend to be at a higher risk for stenosis and arthritis and neck pain in general. Uh, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, and smoking are all 
high indicators for future risk. Bone deformities and older age may also cause pain and symptoms. Unfortunately, I don't usually get people until they already have arthritis and stenosis, so I rarely get this question, how do I prevent it? I usually get the question, how do I get rid of my pain? But ideally, we'd like to prevent it before it ever happens. So if you're in that, in that situation where you don't have pain yet and, and you're worried because of lifestyle that you might end up with it, there are a few things that you can do to help prevent it that are quite effective. Uh, again, improving deep neck flexor control and endurance. Uh, there are a number of exercises online and on my website. Uh, posture, avoiding that posture where your head is so far forward is, is key. The military posture where you're straight, shoulders down or back, and your chin is tucked is ideal for your cervical spine or your neck. Eating healthy, getting the proper nutrients is always important. Maintaining a healthy weight, again, obesity, uh, overweight, high percentage of body fat are all risk factors for developing arthritis and stenosis. Um, going along with that idea, regular exercise, strength, flexibility, uh, endurance, heart health are all important. Avoiding smoking is crucial, and avoiding a lot of high-impact activities can reduce the risk of, of getting this disease. Fortunately, I do get this question now and then in my clinic. Someone has a mild case of neck pain and they get imaging and the doctor tells them they have arthritis or stenosis and then they come to me and say, now what do I do? I don't want this to get worse. Well, there are a number of options. Uh, seeking a medical professional is a good idea. Nutritionists can give you great ideas on improving diet, losing weight. Uh, doctors can prescribe vitamins, different medicines, injections when symptoms become worse. And hopefully it never gets to this, but there are also surgical options. Uh, physical therapy, obviously my favorite. Uh, there are specific and controlled strengthening and flexibility training with a wide variety of manual or hands-on interventions to reduce pain and improve pain-free motion. Uh, other options are trainers, which are great for generic conditioning programs, uh, and people that have access to a pool. Uh, doing your exercises in a pool is great because the water reduces the stress and weight on the joints. Now, if it starts to get really bad, your options narrow a little bit. Uh, first of all, physical therapy, again, my personal favorite, uh, has done great things for many necks uh, with exercise prescription and those hands-on techniques really do a nice job. Uh, again, aquatics, it's great for reducing the forces on the joints. If all that fails, or maybe at times in conjunction with physical therapy and, and a pool program, uh, doctors or physicians use injections, medications, and uh, as a last resort, surgery. So there are a lot of options, but if it is starting to get bad, you really need to see one of these health professionals. So what type of exercises are safe for you to do after a diagnosis of, arthrit of arthritis and stenosis? Again, my main recommendation is to consult a physical therapist. We are trained movement disorder specialists and have a number of safe techniques for you to try. Uh, but in general, low impact exercises, cardiovascular exercises, swimming, biking, uh, even walking, uh, stretching, yoga and Pilates are excellent, well worth a try. Strengthening, just general strengthening in the gym is shown to reduce pain. And again, aquatics or a pool program to relieve stress on the joint is a great idea. So in the clinic people always want exact numbers. How often should I exercise? What should I be doing? All of these questions. The short answer is daily, which I know doesn't sound great to everyone, but 
bottom line is your body wants to move. Exercise is a wonderful form of medicine that has very few side effects, if any. So the short answer is daily. You should exercise every day. So what types of exercises should you be doing? You should try and get at least 30 minutes of cardiovascular training, which is biking, hiking, walking, some form of endurance activity where your heart rate is increased. Then another 30 minutes of resistance training. This is weightlifting, using exercise bands, uh, doing that kind of thing. And then five to 10 minutes of flexibility or stretching. Uh, this can be done most days of the week. Uh, it's important, especially after a diagnosis of arthritis, because stiffness is a primary symptom. So it's annoying and boring for most people, but to be honest, it, it makes a big difference and it's worth adding to your routine. Thank you so much for watching this short presentation on cervical stenosis. I hope it answered a few questions for you and hopefully led you in the right direction. There is plenty of more information on the smartlifeseries.com, uh, facebook.com slash smartlifeseries, and youtube.com slash the smartlifeseries. Uh, each has videos, articles, and loads of other helpful information. So thanks again. Hope to see you back soon.